Hello everyone. So today in this class we will discuss how LSTM actually solves the problem of vanishing gradient. So so if you recall in our earlier lecture what we discussed was uh, how back propagation is done in LSTM and we had done you know detailed analysis of this in our earlier lecture. If you wish then you can uh, watch my earlier lecture on this where I discussed in detail the back propagation of the LSTM network. So here we will discuss how LSTM actually solves the problem of vanishing gradients. So this is actually showing you, you know, uh, the overall structure of the LSTM network, which has multiple blocks, which we have already, you know, discussed in detail. So this is just showing you a high level overview of what are the different uh, signals which are flowing through this LSTM network. So here you can see we have this forget network, then we have this multiplication of ITGT, which is getting added to this particular you know ct minus 2 the cell state which is coming from here so this is actually showing you the high level overview of the cascaded blocks of lstm network so there is nothing special about uh, this architecture but the thing is uh, uh, this will really help us in understanding the problem of vanishing gradients which we will discuss few slides from now and again this is showing you the back propagation which we have already discussed in detail and this, you can see how back propagation is flowing in the backward direction like this and uh, how these uh, you know uh, back propagation is updating the weights and the biases which are present in these uh, in these blocks and you can observe that uh, the gradients which are the back gradient which will be used for updating the weights and the biases are flowing in this direction as it is going in the backward side so it uh, the flow will be like this so this is actually a top level overview of what we had discussed in details so this is actually showing you the flow of gradients in back propagation. Again, this is a, a, another way of representing the LSTM network. So this is a particular a particular block. Like uh, what I am doing here is I am actually discussing a specific block which is over here, and I am redrawing uh, this block in a different way. So this is what is represented over here. Here you can see we have input block, then we have a candidate block, and here we have a forget block. And all these are, and this is the output block, and all these are combined together uh, to give you, uh, you know, uh, the signal HT over here. So we had discussed this in our earlier lecture also. So this is just showing you, uh, you know, a single block of LSTM. And what I am trying to show you over here is uh, the flow of gradients in this particular uh, block. So you can see how the gradients are actually flowing back in this way. As you can see, this is the this is the flow of gradients. And from here, what you can do is you can calculate the derivative of the loss with respect to the weights in the forget gate, then the weights which are present here in the candidate uh, candidate uh, state, and same for the input state. So, so you can see that how you know the gradients are flowing from the output to the input of a individual block. If you watch my earlier lecture, what you can do is you can actually write uh, the derivative of the loss with respect to the specific weights. Right now here, this this particular weight is actually, you know, a is basically a concatenation of all the weights that we have here, like wi, wg, and wf. So basically, this particular w is representing that concatenation. So what you can do is you can uh, derive this equation which is given over here. This is similar to what we have done in our earlier case of RNN. So if you can do that, it's very easy. Basically, you can watch my earlier lecture on back propagation. From there, you can you know derive this equation which is very simple to do so once you have this equation the important thing is uh, to understand how you can you know correlate this with the rnn equation that we had discussed in our earlier case so let's rewrite this equation again so here you see we have this equation which is available which is coming from the from the lstm network and if you recall that we had already discussed in rnn this particular uh, equation which is over here so this is actually coming from the RNN network. Please note that we have this extra summation which is coming here in RNN, but not in this particular case of LSTM because I am taking a specific time instant t. If I want to calculate the total loss with respect to w, then it will be summation of t running from 1 to capital T, that the derivative of the loss uh, at a specific interval time t with respect to w. Then summation will come over here. And because we are actually looking for a specific instant of time t, that's why the summation is not there. So now, if you recall from our earlier lecture on RNN, we saw that this is basically the main problem here, which creates a exploding or a vanishing gradient problem. So let us see how LSTM actually removes this problem of 
uh, vanishing gradients and exploding gradients which are exhibited by RNN. So if you observe carefully, in case of RNN, we have this uh, factor which is actually responsible for creating exploding and vanishing gradients. We have explained uh, this uh, equation in details in our earlier lecture. So if anybody is interested, uh, he or she can watch uh, my earlier lecture on this. Uh, so, so what we observe in case of LSTM is basically this. So this is the factor which is now uh, here, but the rest of that, but but rest of the equations are nearly same. But the only difference is this particular factor. Here we have CT over CT minus one, and here we have H over HM minus one. And one of the intuitions of uh, you know having this factor in place of this factor is that we already know that the hid uh, uh, hidden state is basically divided into two uh, states in case of LSTM. One is the CT that is the cell state and the uh, hidden state itself. So it's because of that reason the CT that is the cell state is appearing here. So let us see how we can you know infer that our LSTM is uh, you know free from vanishing gradient. So here if you observe that this factor was the main culprit at this this actually created exploding and vanishing gradient so if we can if, if there is a way if we can make this factor equal to 1 then what will happen is this particular uh, term which is 1 over t minus k which we have already discussed in our earlier lecture in details you can watch it from there so this particular thing which was earlier let me recall it this factor 1 was earlier alpha beta to the power t minus k so if we can make this alpha beta term equal to 1 then there is no problem of vanishing gradients so here in lstm actually what happens is this alpha beta turns out to be 1 that is if you observe this factor that is that this particular factor turns out to be 1 so if this factor turns out to be 1 means alpha beta is 1 and because of that uh, this whole factor which is over here which was earlier creating the problem of exploding and vanishing gradients in rnn which is now replaced by this is actually equal to 1 so uh, so the thing is uh, the problematic factor is completely removed so that's why we do not have any vanishing gradient problem so here because this gradient is exactly 1 it ensures that information stored in the memory cell is not suffering from vanishing gradients um, so this is uh, this is the thing and the basic idea like how we are maintaining this equal to 1 basically come from two reasons. The first reason I will show you through equation and the second one will come from the architecture of the LSTM itself. So if you if you see one of the equation that governs the cell state is basically this one. So what you do is if you are doing a partial derivative of CT with respect to CT minus 1 then what you will get what you are getting is a forget gate FT and this forget gate FT can be either 1 or 0. So it can be a direct connection like this or there is no connection in between the two wires so this is basically a direct connection so there is no you know in between there is no you know there is no flow of information from other sides like there is no flow from here or from here so it's this ft is acting as a gate so if you see in the case when there is a direct connection i am showing you the path of the lstm network so here uh, if you observe this particular uh, tops, this particular thing which I have drawn over here, if you observe closely, then this is actually, uh, I am drawing this. So it is basically this thing. So this is the thing which I am drawing. So if you observe here closely, then we have this factor Ft which is over here and then we have a ITGT factor also. Right. So when your Ft is 1, what happens is, there is a direct connection, there is a direct connection between CT minus 1 and CT. So there is a direct connection between that. So it's basically some way or the other acting as a skip connection. So what you are doing is you are actually having a uh, connection between uh, CT minus 1 and CT and which is controlled by FT. So what FT is doing is it is either connecting CT minus 1 directly to CT through ITGT or it is basically disconnecting it from its path so that's why um, so that's why actually you know we have uh, we, so that's why we do not have a vanishing gradient problem here because of the direct path so here if you see graphically uh, in this you can observe that there is a direct path between the ct plus 1 and ct 
and there is a direct path between CT and CT minus 1 and there is a direct path between CT minus 1 and CT minus 2. All of it is controlled by the forget gate here. So if forget gate becomes 0, the connection will go away between the two paths and if the forget gate is 1, then there is a direct path which is connecting between CT and CT plus 1. So this direct path ensures that there is no vanishing gradients along the path when we are doing backward propagation. So, so through the through the architecture you can also realize that why uh, LSTM architectures do not have vanishing gradient problem. So, and the second reason from where you can observe this is through this equation. That is the derivative of this is due to the forget gate and forget gate is a controlling gate which either makes the connection 1 between CT and CT minus 1 or make it 0. So, some way or the other it is uh, motivated from the residual connections also which we have in uh, CNN architectures. So, they also you know uh, helps us in uh, you know um, avoiding the vanishing gradients by providing a direct path between the two layers. So, that when the back propagation is done the rest uh, the derivatives will flow through the derivatives will flow through these direct paths instead of going through this path in case of residual networks. So, this finishes off with the reason why LSTM networks do not suffer from vanishing gradients. So, thanks for watching my lecture. See you next time.